welcome back to Function Pilates. I'm Vanessa Kelly, founder of Function Pilates, located here in Arizona, and today I'm back with another reformer workout. And this is gonna be an intermediate workout. I know a lot of you guys have been requesting more intermediate workouts. So if you're new to Pilates or new to the channel, um, I would definitely recommend sticking with more of a beginner workout. And I have over 100 workouts here, so you can find a lot of those beginner reformer workouts in that playlist section. And if you're looking for somewhere just to kind of get an introduction to Pilates and like a format, uh, week by week. I do have a four week program on, in that playlist section as well that you can follow for some guided workouts um, to get you going with Pilates. And if you are also interested in becoming a Pilates instructor, enhancing your knowledge, we do have a virtual teacher training course. All that information is going to be in that description box in that link below. And I will also put some other recommended workouts if you like this one. And if you are wanting to shop the studio, some of the props you see, some of the studio essentials, you can check out our Amazon storefront and see all my favorite things as well as the studio stuff. And for those that are ready to get started, let's go ahead and begin. Let's go ahead and begin with one medium spring or one red spring. And we're gonna begin with a nice tall warm up here seated on the reformer. So taking that headrest down, we're gonna turn to look at the back of the risers. And go ahead and find your ropes here right above the metal buckle. Take it a nice tall stance there so your sits bones, arms are long. Inhale to prepare and exhale. We're going to articulate and roll back to a nice C curve here. Nice comfortable spot, maybe not too much as we start to warm up the spine, our in internal muscles through our abdomen. And just beginning to feel this energy point out through your toes. Dropping those shoulders as you restack your body nice and tall at the top. Exhale, lower it back down again, slowly returning through center. Just stick a few of these to get us warmed up. Nod that chin, scoop that belly, maybe activate through those glutes. Let's lift the left leg to tabletop, extend it out long. We're just challenging ourselves as we alternate to the next leg. Left, place it down, right, and place it down, shoulders still down and long. Good, restack your body. Inhale there, exhale, we'll lower it back down. Hold it there. We're gonna go ahead and take the left leg to tabletop. Let's add little pulses as we barely move through the machine. Maintain a nice active tabletop through that left side. Good, about five there. Right leg comes to tabletop, scoop it down and in adding a little bit more of that pulse activation through the deep inner abdominal muscles. Five repetitions, set the leg down. Lower back a little bit more. Let's get a little bit tiny, deeper intrinsically through the abdomen as you pulse it for 10 here. Beautiful. Heels are pressing down into that headrest. Jaws relaxed. Take a breath. Slowly roll and restack up to a nice tall seated position. From here, we're gonna add in a little oblique. So grab, taking your right strap with your left hand, right hand over your belly. We're gonna slowly articulate lower down into that C curve. And we're gonna feel like we're rotating into the strap here as we sit up nice and tall. We exhale C curve down back to a nice neutral straight position. And as we come right back up again, we're rotating towards that rope. And you should feel this natural pull not that you're actively doing it on your own. And let's take that right arm out to the side, sweeping it through just to add a little bit more of that challenge with our obliques. Maybe look over your, uh, your fingers here. Reach it through center. Open out that shoulder, sitting tall. Exhale, we bring that arm through center. Beautiful, open it out. I just feel that work that you're creating as we're warming our bodies up right now. Hand back to the belly, little pulsing there, getting a little deeper into those obliques. Shoulder down, return through the center. Beautiful. So let's hang that strap up. Let's grab a hold of our left one and place our right hand right above the metal buckle. Left hand over the belly. We're gonna lower it down. Again, it's as if your shoulders rotating towards that rope here to get into that oblique. 
coming back through the center here, re-squaring our shoulders and hips. Notice what your legs are doing. Are they shifting a lot? Are they staying nice and put? Because they should feel anchored here. Notice how this side feels in comparison to the other side. Nice soft jaw. Take that left arm out to the side, sweeping it in through the midline. We're gonna open it out, allowing our eyes to look over the fingertips here. Return through the center, nice and tall. Again, with Pilates, everything's meant to be in controlled. Nothing's supposed to be fast. We can still create stamina in the work that we're doing. So if you're having very good intentions, deliberate movements here, you're gonna feel that heat develop. Good, open out to the left. Shoulders down and away. Taking that left hand back, adding some pulses there to those obliques. Beautiful. And come up through the center. Excellent. So let's grab a hold of both of those. Let's go ahead and bend our knees. Feet are flat against the shoulder. The shoulder or the headrest and open those arms out to a T. I like to use the handles, but of course you can obviously use your loops if you're, you don't have handles or you just prefer the loops. But again, nice and tall through that spine as we activate those postural muscles, opening out to a nice strong T position, still maintaining that peripheral vision of your arms. Let's go ahead and lower back into that C curve that we know and oblique it out. So we're rotating through our spine as we open out to a T in this diagonal version. Feet are still grounded. Watch that your shoulders aren't creeping up, but you're rotating through your spine with your sits bones nice and anchored here. Good. Let's go ahead and into a bicep curl as we still continue to hold this C curve position, knees are bent. If you prefer legs out straight, feel free to play with it. But again, we're co-contracting through our bicep and tricep here. So keeping those elbows just slightly below the shoulder, fingertips are energetically pointing up, and then let's slowly restack that spine. Good, hold that bicep curl, and then let's continue to build this heat through our arms, through our abdominal muscles. Yes, feel the stretch through our low back as we really focus on the articulation and the C curve that we are promoting here. Release it. Good, let's hang up those handles. And then we're gonna take our headrest to a halfway or a nice and tall position here. And we're gonna add on a spring. So I'm adding on a green spring, which is my heavy spring here for our sideline footwork series. So it's a medium and a heavy. Stack those hips. You can let your bottom leg just kind of float with it as you press through your top foot. And my goal here is to have the sole of the foot pressing firmly into that foot bar so that you're feeling the connection through your toes, through your heel. The best through the arch of the foot and you may notice that maybe you can't come in as far depending on your flexibility through your calves and that's completely normal. It's just allowing your awareness to be being there. Good. So our goal here is our glutes and our quads. That's our muscle focus. And let's come back in and we're gonna internally rotate at the hip socket. So the arch of the foot is on, toes and knee are looking downward and you're gonna get a new sense of feeling through that piriformis through our hip flexors. Beautiful. Inhaling and exhaling. Just taking inventory of your body as you start to soften through your shoulder, soften through your neck and your jaw. You should be feeling some of that heat. And then let's take it to externally rotated position where the knee and toes are looking upward. And exhale, press. So facilitate the movement through your glutes, through your quad. Don't power through with the leg here at all. Our focus is to isolate those muscles and really allow them to get the benefit of this exercise as we strengthen through our hips and promote pelvic stability. Good, abs are drawing into that spine. And then let's go ahead and carefully come through a supine position so you're on your back and we're gonna continue with some single leg here. So the springs are just fine, but if you need to reduce it, feel free. 
right leg is pushing out into that footwork and that left leg is being energetic as it reaches those toes towards the wall. Good, try to hold a static position there with that left leg and allow this to create this heaviness so that your abdominal muscles are actually working a little bit more than you would like to. Good, exhale, pressing through that right heel and then returning, come back in. So let's stay with the right leg on your toes, we're transferring and now the left leg is adding some coordinated movement where it's opening out to the side. So it's almost like this windmill out to the left, but it's gonna challenge your pelvis to maintain a nice neutral position. So just be mindful, how far can you go out with that left leg without that right hip wanting to lift up on you? And it might be very small at the beginning, but it's something to really track and progress. That's the benefit and that's the, you know, the joy of Pilates is understanding how much you have progressed in your journey. Good. Let's go ahead and turn to the other side because we're going to start that variation all over again. So we're going to Again, keep our springs as is, our left leg, our foot is completely pressing through that foot bar, right leg's going for the right, and exhale, stretch it out. Perfect. And it's about 10 repetitions on each variation here, anywhere from eight to 12, depending on how you're feeling that day. Good. Just pressing through with equal weight distribution, standing tall, coming in, take that internal rotation to the, just like the arch of your foot here, the very center, so that your toes and knee are looking downward. Good, shoulders down and relax. Beautiful. And you may notice with these internal and external rotations of these variations that it might feel a little challenging to your hip. Maybe you were like, I don't think I had that much range of motion or, or the opposite. So again, it's really understanding our body's posture, where we have any hip rotation occurring, any hip elevation, because that's what Pilates is all about is customizing to our body's posturing providing those exercises that are best for us. Beautiful, shoulders down, exhale, pressing equally through that heel and returning back home. Come back through on your back and then we're gonna go ahead and keep that left heel on that foot bar. Let's have that right leg out floating, very energetic, exhale, press through that left heel, good. So maybe you're even squeezing through that left glute to feel the back side of that leg get a little bit more involvement. You're consciously thinking about your belly button pulling downward towards the mat or to the, towards the floor. Exhale, press out, inhale, return. Beautiful. Let's come down to our toes. And then this is where we're adding that coordinated movement. So keep that pelvis nice and quiet as the right leg floats out to the side. Good. And then at the same time, just to add a little bit more to your thinking here is that left knee should still be looking upward. So it's almost like you're, you know, that one, one of those things where you're, you're patting your head and um, rubbing your stomach here. Good. Deep breath as we press. Exhale it out, bring it home. Beautiful. Let's push out and let's just get a nice stretch there through those ankles, through those toes, adding some calf raises, adding a nice long stretch for yourself. But I do like to uh, add in these calf raises as it really opens up through those toes and our ankles. Let's go ahead and bring it in. Heels together, toes apart. Let's again go through this. And it's about six repetitions here that I'm doing. And I'm just changing up these variations since we don't normally do calf raises like this. Good. And then return home. And then last set, we're gonna take our toes together, heels apart. It's gonna feel like you're in more of that pigeon toe position. 
but we are working, the whole purpose here is to work the outer parts of our calves. There's a lot of different muscles there, so we wanna make sure all of those are working equally and strengthening and stretching at the same time. Good, and I lied, one more position. Let's take it out nice and wide. Toes are on and the skin stay parallel. So you're just lowering and lifting here, but it's in a wider position, so it might feel different for you if you're not used to being this wide standing. Perfect, come right back home. So now what I'd like you to do is take your feet and actually place them on the frame of the foot bar here and have this solid connection through it as you push in and out. And notice if your heels are lifting, can you try a little harder to maintain the connection of your toes and your heel against the frame of the foot bar here? So I'm on the outer part, I'm not actually on the foot bar, but I am pressing equally through the legs of the, of the foot bar. Good, and see how that feels to you. Exhale. And let's return back in. Good, carefully sit yourself up for me. And then we're gonna go ahead and reduce our springs here. And we're gonna go ahead and take it down to just uh, one medium spring. So just one red spring. And then you're gonna place your feet the tops of your feet underneath the foot bar. And I know this sounds a little wonky, but bear with me. You're gonna push out very ever so slightly. It's easy to press out. The work is the return. And this is great if you are one who suffers with low back pain, because this is actually teaching you how to contract those muscles, how to awaken those muscles. So again, it's easy to push out, so don't get so crazy at pressing out, it's hard to pull back in, but that's where the imprint, that's where the work is being done. And I'm holding onto my pegs there just because it feels better for me, so feel free to play with it. But again, imprint, really intentionally push your low back into the mat and see how that feels. Good, shake it out. Some of you might get a little bit of cramps there with the feet if you're not used to pointing so much, but when you're ready, let's just go ahead and take a nice little figure four stretch as we carefully push in and out. So you can take that left ankle over that right knee and see how that's feeling for you. And it's on a light spring, so it shouldn't feel anything crazy. But again, you can be active, like we're going in and out, or you can just stay in a nice comfortable position where you feel more of the work, maybe add some rotation, get a little bit more of that hip flexor stretch going up and down and as if you're holding on to the pegs it's just a nice sense of opening through the shoulders and the chest especially if you work at a desk or you just you know you're doing a lot with your hands in front of you which most of us do so it just feels really nice good switch when you're ready Taking that nice final stretch as you rotate your hips over towards the left, towards the side. And just enjoying a little bit of this break as we get into our ab series here. But the abs should feel warm now. Go ahead and carefully sit yourself up. And we're gonna go ahead and take that headrest down flat. I'm gonna stay on those same springs, so no need to adjust. If you do need to adjust, it's because you you will um, prefer more assistance or you want less assistance, depending on what level you are feeling at today. And then have a seat with your box on top of the reformer in that long waist position and sit yourself all the way towards the edge of the box there in front. And then as you grab a hold of those handles, you're gonna go ahead and lie yourself down and pause into a tabletop position. So from here, extend those arms long we're gonna to begin to turn the palms in towards the hips and open out to a T. So nice and strong through our tabletop, through our neck, I want you to maintain that 45 degree position as you're, maybe you're looking right between your knees, but the purpose here, the point is, we don't want you looking up. 
that's where we get our neck into that limbo land and then we are using more of our neck muscles and less of our abdominal muscles. But again, hold those knees closely together, point out through those toes. Good, flip those palms downward and open. Bring those arms straight up. Good, so we're going into shoulder flexion here as we lift and lower, framing our hips, hovering off that box. Exhale, and you got this. Keep scooping that belly in. And for any reason you need to take a break, feel free to take a break and join in because there are a few different variations here right into your bicep curls. And these are about eight to 10 repetitions each. Again, we're all on our own journey, so you pick the repetitions that work for you. It's not about the number, so get the number out of your head. It's about how many good ones you're doing. Because you can do 10 and you could have done two good ones and eight bad ones, and then that's when we feel injuries occur afterwards. Okay, so then from here, we're lowering and lifting in our tabletop position and it's work. So it's easy to go down, it's hard to lift up. So again, be mindful, pay attention to your body. Really scoop that belly up and in as you pull those knees right back into that starting position. Again, about 10 here, really developing that heat. And we're feeling the, the fire in the midsection. Release those arms release the feet and carefully sit yourself back up into a tall position. Beautiful. So from here, we're going to go ahead and take a little breather, just a nice simple chest expand, expansion. So you can sit in the very center of your box, feet are grounded, just pressing those arms straight back, fingertips looking towards the floor. And if your hip flexors are bothering you at this point, I'd like to cross my ankles and let my knees fall off to the side. So that's another option for you. But again, shoulders are down. Just think of these heavy water buckets sitting on top. Perfect. Continue to breathe. And then from here, we're gonna go ahead and take it into our bow and arrow. So palms are looking at one another. Bend that right elbow as you rotate to the right. Bend that left elbow as you look to the left. It's not about the looking, it's about the rotation. So feel that rotation occurring, facilitate that rotation, and the eyes just kind of go with the flow here. Good, is that opposite arm straight and the other arm bending? So a lot of the times we get a little confused and um, uncoordinated as we're doing that. So just some, something to pay attention to. Okay, as we bring our hips to the very edge of the box as we did it the first time. We're going back down again. Feet are gonna stay flat though, but you're gonna reach behind you with good healthy shoulders. Sweep those arms around, scoop through the belly to restack into a nice tall position here. And exhale, we lower it down. We've done a ton of these since our warm up. Reach behind you, circle those arms, press your feet for, firmly into the headrest as you restack, reset. And exhale, bicep curl, holding that position, reach to frame those ears, sweep those arms around, our, drawing our chin down to our chest, pushing our feet down, beautiful. Lower it down, taking that breath and reach. And exhale, coming back through the center. Let's go ahead and hang that up. And we're gonna go ahead into a little bit of hip work here. So with that being said, we're gonna take our box and set it on the floor. I'm still on this one medium spring, but with this exercise, I definitely could go down to a lighter spring. Um, so I could go to one light or one blue spring. Um, but again, it's really up to you how strong you're feeling. So as you position the box on the floor, you're gonna keep your left knee against that shoulder blocks and your right foot is on the box here. So our goal is to keep our right hip and right knee over the right ankle. So we don't wanna feel like we're swaying so much as we're abducting, so you're pushing that left knee into the shoulder blocks. Some of you might find it nice to have a knee pad under your knee, but again, this is a lot of work as you're pressing against this resistance working through those external rotator muscles. 
Good. So that was all about the outer part of the thigh. Now let's promote the inner part of the thigh, the adductors. So you may need to adjust your box so it doesn't feel like you're so cramped, but take that left foot out to the side quite widely. And then as you retain resistance here, slowly abs are drawn in. Try to keep your hips squared here. So think of your right hip going uh, backwards, left hip coming forward and squeezing through that right thigh. And again, your left leg, even though it's not doing anything, it is like almost like your, your, um, it's very, it's very built in to being grounded. So you really are going to feel the work there as you go through this. Taking it into another ab exercise, we're going into some oblique. So if you're ready, come with me and grab a hold of that handle or your loop. Find your legs in tabletop. And we're gonna simply take this rotation where you're gonna tap your right elbow to the mat here. Exhale, just find this complete 180 as we just create this like beautiful rainbow over our chest. Good, and tap and release, and tap and release. Perfect, holding and maintaining that tabletop is challenging too, but we are going for 10. Exhaling and inhaling. Good, shoulders down again, soften that jaw, and then carefully, let's sit ourselves up. Nice. And then from here, we're gonna go ahead and take it so that we can find our box on the other side to repeat. And now that you know what to expect, you know if you have more of a stronger hip or inner thigh on one side, so you can adjust your springs accordingly. But let's go ahead and find our Right knees up against the shoulder blocks so they're supported. Left foot is on the block um, on the box in front of us. Hands to hips, shoulders down, and exhale. We press away. Good. Exhale to press out. Inhale to bring it through. Good. Nice and controlled. Building on this intensity, not letting that carriage come crashing in, but it's just floating over that stopper. Good. And then we're gonna switch. So left knee up against the shoulder blocks. And let's take that right foot on top of the box in front of us and hands to hips as we pull it in. Again, once you get going, sometimes we need to make those adjustments with the box, so feel free to take that time to do so. Good. And just dropping those shoulders down. Tailbone's tucked under. It's another cue I should have mentioned previously because sometimes we get a little bit more into our backs and less in our inner thighs. So once you're ready, go ahead and grab a hold of your handle, which is the one also in the back, furthest back, and then tabletop those legs, you're lying down, you're gonna take it into that 180. So making sure that the legs are just holding their quiet position and letting your upper body go through the motions here. So tapping that left elbow down, beautiful. Staying with it nice and strong, pulling those abdominals down and in, and maybe even think about like as they're putting on a pair of tight jeans here as you can maintain contraction of the muscle. Perfect. And simply let that handle go down. Let's go ahead and sit ourselves up. And we're going to go ahead and reduce our springs to an extra light spring, which on my case is a yellow on balanced body. 
And then we're gonna go ahead on to a quadruped position here, hands to the frame, tuck those toes and pull up into plank. So let's just go ahead and go into those jackrabbits where you're pulling those knees into the chest, shoulders over your wrists. And again, there's resistance here because we do have that extra light spring on, but you're scooping that belly and lower back down. So about five repetitions is what I did here. Feel free to do any less or more, but we're building on this. So again, for today, I would try five. Now we're gonna go into our pikes where we're lifting those hips up, shoulders over those wrists, back to plank. Exhale, we lift up. Good. And try not to overly grip through the frame and drop those shoulders down. You got it. Five there, bend it, relax, take a child's pose, regroup your body. We're gonna combine both of those exercises together. You can stay here with that extra light spring if you need some assistance. However, I'm going to take all of my springs off. So I am using only my own body weight. Find yourself into that plank to begin. And we go ahead into our jackrabbit. We release to plank. We pike the hips up, soften down to plank. Jackrabbit and back to the plank. Pike it up. Beautiful. Take inventory. It's so important because these are the times when we want to push through something because we want to achieve it that we will injure ourselves. So is your form good? Are you taking inventory? Are you breathing? Beautiful. So there's 10 total here, five pikes and five jackrabbits, and then go ahead and rest it. Good. So let's go ahead and add on a red and blue spring here, a medium and a light spring. And if you aren't, already in your loops, go ahead and change out into your loops. We're gonna prepare for a couple exercises with this spring tension. And then from here, we're gonna go ahead and lie down on our back. We can find our loops and place our feet in it, in them one at a time. Good. So it's a nice little break here from everything we've done. So again, keep those hips grounded, arms are down by your side, point through those toes, take an exhale as you press those legs down and get a nice circle around. Just opening up through those hip sockets and mobilizing through those joints. Good, we're providing some synovial fluid into those hip sockets. Beautiful, and then I love to always mention to pay attention how far is each of your legs opening out to the sides because we can get so caught up into our hip circles and go ahead and reverse if you haven't already and we're not paying attention to the equal amount of pressure we're pressing into those loops or the equal amount of distance that we're opening up because as i mentioned at the beginning of class here Pilates is a lot about posture and how we can create better posture and alignment for ourselves. So as we go into this next exercise, bend into tabletop, push both legs to center to 45. Bend one leg to tabletop, press both into 45. Yes, so it's almost like you're walking up the wall in a sense. Good. Bend and extend. Bend one knee in, both legs out through center. And then go ahead into a simple frog position, heels together, toes apart. You're gonna open out to the sides, pull those heels back together and bend the knees into frog. What's different about here is that I want you to go ahead and keep the carriage quiet as the legs open out here. Squeeze and pull together. Good, it's our extended frog. Exhale, draw those heels in. We bend, keep it quiet, open the legs, exhale. And we're feeling those, that activation through our inner thighs, right? And squeeze. Good. 
So a few that way and then we reverse it. We open out to the sides. Now this is where the carriage doesn't move when we pull those knees and heels back to frog. Press out, open out to the sides and bend and heels come together. Beautiful. I like to angle things a little higher in order for us to achieve that exercise, the quietness. So if you're having trouble, you're like, well, I don't know, my carriage keeps moving. Angle a little higher and see if that works. You're still going to get so much of that inner thigh work. Okay, legs come up to the center. And we're going to go ahead and add in this V position. So if the legs are up at the top, they're hip distance apart, and then draw them into a V while you're angling your heels together. So you're, again, wrapping those inner thighs close and knitly together here. Exhale. And intentionally maybe draw those abdominals down and in so you can feel your abs flatten here. Perfect. Okay, into a short spine. So head rest is definitely down flat. Arms are down by your side. You're pressing into frog. We're going to lift and peel our spine up. Toes over the eyes. Bend to frog. Really articulate and lower your spine down. Tailbone releases and we press out. So if there's like an op if there's a part here that you really like, you like to hang, feel free and get that nice stretch. Nice and slow as we articulate and lower that tailbone down. Exhale, we press it out. Beautiful. So again, we're going to go all the way back up. Reach to the sky. Shoulders down. Palms are flat. Articulate through the spine to lower it down. And extend those legs out for me. Get a nice hamstring pull here to sweeten up our hip work. And then carefully, let's release one foot out at a time. So from here, we're gonna go ahead and I, like I mentioned before, I'm gonna keep my springs the same and then come to all to my knees. Feet can be in between the shoulder blocks. Knees are supported under a knee pad if need be, and knees are open wide. Palms are on that foot bar, and we're gonna do a shoulder press here. So I'm starting with externally rotated elbows, but the fingers are looking towards one another. So as we press out, again, as with a healthy shoulder, we're bending and straightening out through those arms. Good. Bend and straighten. Bend and straighten, beautiful. Come back to parallel for this nice deep parallel tricep press. Good, so its elbows are pointing down towards the floor, shoulders are relaxed, you got it. And exhale, we press, inhale to bend. And about 10 repetitions once again, I try to keep that the default here for more of those necessary exercises. And now we are reducing the weight. So I am on just one medium spring. You may need to go a little lighter than this because we're going into single arm work. So push out with both arms. Then take your left hand behind your low back and then we're pressing out single arm here. So pay attention. Is your shoulder lifting up? Are you rotating through your chest nice and slow anywhere from about four to six here I would say press and then hold it now take your left hand back because this is just a safer position right hand goes through the low back to support it and then we're taking that left arm and again, maybe you're no noticing your range of motion where maybe you're stopping a little sooner, maybe you're going deeper, but are you compensating? That is the word, compensating. Do you feel your shoulder lifting up more than normal? Then let's go ahead and slowly return back in. Good. Let's go ahead and take it into a nice little mermaid stretch here. So zigzag those legs. Right hand is supported on that foot bar and just reach up and over as you shine your ribs towards the ceiling. Beautiful. Let me just take it down and allow this to be your cool down as we just take into mind what we've done today. 
as we come into our final exercises. Nice. And let's just go ahead and stand up for an Eve's lunge. So we're gonna have our right foot supported on that shoulder block. Left foot is on the floor. We're gonna take it into a nice deep lunge here where you want to have that left knee over your ankle and your right hip forward, left hip back. And then maybe play with it. Just try to see if you can kind of like rotate through your hips here to get a deeper hip flexor stretch. There was, there could have been a lot of hip flexory types of exercises today. So just kind of take your time and get the benefit, the stretches you need before you move on with your day. Good, take a hamstring stretch. And then let's go ahead and we're gonna sit down in that carriage for a mermaid, zigzag those legs. Again, other options would be to have your legs crisscross in front of you. You can have your legs straight out in front of you, or you can even place yourself on a box and sit on that. Either way, the goal is to just feel your body getting a much well-deserved oblique and rib stretch here. It could even trickle down into your hip, depending on how tight you are. Good. And after we've done about three of those, maybe you like a little more, we can take it into our Eve's lunge. So right foot is all the way up, left foot supported by the shoulder block. Take that nice, holding position. Maybe you're going into a few of those rotations like we did earlier where you're just kind of rotating through the hip. And it's just really nice to kind of play and see what your body is like responding well or responding not well to. Our body is uh, a token of giving us a feeling of answers and knowing what do we need to do for, for our body. We demand a lot in our daily activities. Take it into a final hamstring stretch. Shoulders down and bring that right back in. Beautiful, let's finish it with our roll downs. So hip distance apart with those feet, make sure they're parallel. Sweep those arms up to the ceiling. Let's just go and stretch it down. Just check in with yourself. How is the body feeling? And notice every time we do these roll downs, are you able to actually like get down a little further? Food for thought. But thank you again, guys. Loved having you here. I really do appreciate your support and loyalty. If you're new, please feel free to subscribe. Hit a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. I'd love to hear what you guys are thinking. See you next time.